This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. What happens when you combine the most visual stories of the Bible with one of today's best fashion photographers? Well, this is the result. What you're looking at are photographs from Michael Belk. His breathtaking book, Journeys with the Messiah, may shatter some of your preconceived ideas of who Jesus was and is today. And Michael joins us today from his home in Florida. Michael, great to have you with us. Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me on your show. I really want to get to your personal story and your personal investment in this whole project, Journeys with the Messiah. But first, let's take a look at one of the photographs to start with, just to whet your appetite. And this one's called Quandary. And Michael, give me, give me your, your view of, this, of how this thing, whole, whole thing took place, how it came together. Well, you know, Quandary is the story of the rich young ruler. Um, we just took a different angle on it. So uh, what, what we're doing here is, is we're having a first century backdrop with an actor as a first century Jesus. And then we're bringing the 20th, 21st century into the, into the set so that, uh, you know, you immediately look at the image and you know something, something's out of whack. So when we decided to do this uh, and we wanted to tell the, the idea behind the, the story of the rich young ruler, we thought, okay, well, let's have him be a really rich young ruler. He drives a Ferrari. He's got a good-looking, good-looking babe, you know, Rolex watch, Louis Vuitton luggage, you know, all of that stuff. So that's how we that's how we pulled that one together. And the the story there, I mean, we see Jesus in, into a into a modern situation like this, and the question for the rich young ruler uh, in in the Bible is, uh, he's saying, well, what do I need to to do to inherit inter- eternal life? Exactly, exactly. And that's what the story's about. But we're taking a little bit of a slant there because uh, for most people, the story of the rich young ruler is not a, about incredible wealth. It was in the case of, of, the, of the biblical story. But what we wanted to point out is that everyone has things that are holding them back from achieving that relationship with Jesus Christ. So in the case of the rich young ruler, as we know it, the biblical story uh, Jesus wasn't telling him uh, to sell everything and give it. He wasn't telling us to sell everything and give it to the poor that, you know, nobody have any money to give to the church or anything after that. But this was the rich young ruler's particular thing that was holding him back from from the dream of following Jesus into eternity. And Jesus, you know, had to kind of hit him hard with that and say, you know, let's get rid of the Ferrari and the Rolex and the Louis Vuitton luggage, sell it, sell it all, give the money to the poor and then come follow me. And I, I wanted to start with that particular image because it, it, it's not exactly your story, but it's the same question Christ asked you at one time. You guys started this whole, this whole industry, the whole photography thing, uh, selling clothes as a, as a teenager coming out of high school, right? Yeah, yeah. I started working uh, for a guy named Augie Griner back in high school and fell in love with fashion uh, and continued to work in in the fashion industry through my college days. And then um, part of God's plan looking back was that I was gonna go to work for kind of the pre-runner of of, uh, Polo, a company called Gantt Shirtmakers in New York, a job that was, uh, you know, a job that was for a seasoned veteran, not for a a 22 year old kid. And, uh, but I got hired and, and, you know, for a short time, I thought I sat at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and then I figured out it was just a job. (laughs) So, but, uh, so I continued, you know, there and uh, as an amateur photographer came up with an idea of how I could better promote the sale of my own line by using photography. Odd that a lot of that was not being done and it was so successful, I decided I would, uh, take it a step further and, and uh, quit my job and go to New York and do this for other companies. Do the whole fashion. And you, and you worked, I mean, you, you did work with, with Vogue and, and L and uh, GQ. And we didn't shoot for magazines. We shot for clients and put them in magazines. So, you know, Vogue, uh, GQ, L, Vanity Fair, uh, Ritz Carlton, Departures Magazine, all of them. And that led to, you know, a lot of fun as well because those, those people have you know, big entertainment budgets. But there, there had to come a time when you said, what, what's it all about? And uh, uh, there's, there was a real impactful time that God asked you the same thing. What are you going to do with all this? You know, if you're going to work, you can't come up with, you know, too much better a job than being a fashion photographer and, 
and uh, you know traveling to beautiful places and photographing beautiful people and you're getting paid well and so forth but I kept watching people and I'm saying why why me why do I get to enjoy this fantastic lifestyle and that guy over there you know doesn't have enough money to have something to eat uh, you know, is there something expected of me? But I kept, I think I was having this silent prayer, just asking, asking God, I said, I know you expected more of me. You know, what is that? And so that silent prayer went on for a long time till he decided he would answer that. And then, then, then how did he answer that? I mean, at, the, at some point in time, you said, I've got this career. What's he really calling me to do? And how did all that, that vision take place? How did it foment in your mind and in your spirit to, to do what we see today in, in Journeys with Messiah? Yeah, well, if I was God talking to you, it would have sounded like this. It would have said, well, Belk, you are, you're just so hard-headed to get your attention. I'm going to have to pull the rug out from under you and take you down. And uh, that's what he did, uh, just out of the blue, uh, unexpected just an event in my life just took me into a downward spiral. I crashed and burned and went into a very dark abyss. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I sometimes wonder if I just went to hell during that time. It was, it was the most, it was, it was frightening. It was dark. It was uh, panicky. It was lost. It was, there's absolutely no way out. And I think when I reached that, that point that I realized I can't get out of this. Where does God appear in all of that? Well, he showed up in my bedroom one night, and I can't tell you that I saw God, but I can tell you for sure that the presence of God was in my room, and um, I likened it to a casual conversation of a neighbor dropping by for coffee, and I admitted to him that night that I just didn't have a clue, and if, and if he would show me his way, uh, I'd certainly like to give it a try. And you, you mentioned in the book that you want this uh, Journeys with the Messiah to give people a fresh perspective, especially if they don't know Christ, a fresh perspective not only of who he was, but who he is today. And if you would have seen these photographs in your pre-Christian days and in, in, in the time before this, uh, do you think they would have affected you? How, how would they have affected you at that time? Well, that's a, that's a great question, Bob. Uh, I've never had that asked before. Um, I think they would have impacted me because... You know, I was around people who were, were Christians and, and living the Christian walk, and they were always telling me I needed Jesus in my life. They just couldn't explain why. Um, but I would, get, I would engage them in conversation, and I didn't have the answer, but I kept saying, I just think you got it all wrong. I, I think it's a beautiful story, and I think it's a story of love, and, and, and it's just become this religious thing. You know, these images kind of re reflect, you know, a, a different view. And, uh, and, it, and we try to do them and not be religious in them. Well, the, the book itself, I mean, it's certainly not a religious book. Matter of fact, it's not even sold in, in Christian bookstores, but it's not a religious book. It's a book about a relationship and, the, and how Christ relates to all of these modern day situations. One of the, the favorites is one called Compassion. And I think it can, can speak to anyone. But, but tell me how the, the whole process came about to, to shoot this particular shot. So when I had this, this idea laid on me, it took me four years before I actually moved on it. But during that time, there were, there were many things going on. One was I, I was invited to this uh, uh, <clears throat> weekend retreat. And uh, when I showed up, everybody had gone off to play golf and stuff. And there was this guy there named Neb Hayden who was a— uh, a uh, religious scholar. So he wrote this book called uh, Seeing the Gospels Through the Eyes of a First Century Jew, that we miss a lot of stuff. And he told me about the woman at the well, that we get this idea that she was somehow a woman of ill repute, or certainly one with many, many partners, maybe a prostitute. And he said, but, but according to what my research uh, shows, she wouldn't have been a prostitute. She would have most likely have been a woman who couldn't have children. She was barren. And so the story goes, she gets married, she can't have children, which was vitally important, and a good reason to be given a divorce in those days. They would divorce her, she'd get married again. That guy would find out. And this went on through five husbands. Now she's living with a guy that she's not married to, 
and she can't make any demands on him. Uh, so if she didn't have her father's home to return to, who knows, she could have become a prostitute. So uh, Jesus, when you see this image, well, in the story, but when you see this image, he approaches her from a point of view of compassion, whereas we who are reading that story often uh, you know, approach her from, from a judgmental side. And then you look back through Jesus' stories and he was always compassionate. And so as Christians, if we're not compassionate with people, how do we, how do we go about telling Jesus' story to them? You know? If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.